Hey y'all, today I'm going to be answering some questions that have been left in the comments. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited. Today I'm going to be addressing several of the questions that I've gotten in comments and I'm seeing them asked over and over by different people. So I try to address them as I do my, my videos, uh, but I think I'm gonna just put it in one spot so there's one video that you need to go see as opposed to catching little tips from all of my videos. We're gonna have a one-stop shop kind of place. And so today we're gonna talk about Dharma Trading, Dharma Trading dye powders, their natural fiber Procyon dye powders, which is what I use, and then the meanings be behind why is there an asterisk or two, or why is there a T on the label? What does that mean? And it's also a big thank you. My channel as of recent, and it's all because of you. My subscriber count has gone up. My interaction in the comments have gone up. And I'm thrilled. I've been doing this for a while. And it's it's nothing is monetized. If it is one day, that would be that would be fun. But I'm just doing it for funsies. And I'm doing it to almost just to leave a legacy. So someone has somewhere to go to learn about what I do in all aspects of my life to learn, you know, about tie-dyeing or to learn about crystals when making jewelry or how to crochet or how to take care of your camper if you've got a camper and you're traveling. Just, you know, that's my channel. I want to say thank you. From the bottom of my heart, I'm just so tickled. When I log into YouTube and I've got all of these comments and questions and people saying thank you, worth more than money in so many levels so now that the mushy part's over <laughs> let's talk about some procyon dye powders i've got myself all verklempt my cooks you're really making me nervous girl okay move the tea because she will knock it over Okay, so back to kind of reiterate what I what I discussed, but a lot of my my new tie dyers when they're shopping around, and when you type in tie dye powder, you know Procyon natural fiber dyes, but Dharma's gonna pop up. Um, in my humble opinion, it's one of the best. I've tried a bunch of different types of. Procyon dyes and I keep going back to Dharma and I will continue to try them to be honest um, just because especially if it's something that's locally made like in my area or newly formulated um, I'm still going to try them but I always come back I always come back and so one, two, I just grabbed some three random cooks it's really needed today what's up girl? Oh, she's really yeah there it is okay so we're gonna start off with um, first and foremost the one I get asked the most is like what are the asterisks for um, and so I'm gonna start with this one this one great apple doesn't have an asterisk it does have a T and we're gonna talk about that um, but we're it doesn't have an asterisk so the asterisks are um, put there so you get the manufacturers guidelines for what amounts to mix for your liquid dyes. Um, so if there's no asterisk, Dharma Trading recommends two teaspoons per eight ounces of water. Um, if there is an asterisk, like with this Azure Blue, there's an asterisk right there. That means twice the amount of dye powder to eight ounces of liquid. So that would mean four teaspoons of dye powder to eight ounces of liquid and then we get into Raven and we've got two asterisks so that means four times the amount four times two is eight so you would use eight teaspoons per eight ounces of water and when you get into these high volumes 
of, of mixing a lot of dye powder into an eight ounce cup in your applicator bottle, um, you can get freckling, which means as you are shaking up your bottle, your dye powder is going to settle at the bottom. It's not going to mix in well. And then as you squeeze it on your garment or whatever you're working on, some clumps of dye powder will come out the nozzle and then sit on the garment. And then as it cures, whether it's in a bag or not in a bag, um, what it's going to do is it's going to have a high concentration of color in that one point where the dye powder did not get mixed, escaped your applicator bottle, and landed on your garment. And so it's called freckling. So you're going to have your your colors are going to be dispersed as you know in your design, but you're going to have this pinpoint, almost like when we do the hot water irrigation. There's a lot of freckling where that color just lays there in one big you know, saturated, really hot spot of color, that's freckling. It's kind of frowned upon with your professionals. I like it. I like how it adds to the pattern in my opinion. All of this is my opinion based on my experiences, by the way. So what you can do, you can paste, um, and by pasting, um, put your your dye powder in your applicator bottle and then have a dedicated tool maybe um, something long enough to get to the bottom like a, an old paintbrush um, you know something like that and add a small amount of water and mix in there uh, and paste it up make a paste and then add a little bit of water and mix it until you're you more or less kind of like grinding the powder through the water until when you get into your full eight ounces and you give it a good shake, your dye powder is now dispersed in your liquid and it's not at the bottom to where it's gonna cause freckling. Um, what I do with mine, especially with, well I do it in all of them, but even more so with my double and quadruple concentrations, um, I use marbles because some of my applicator bottles are four cups, so there's a lot going in there. Um, and then I put rose quartz in everything because rose quartz is for self-love. Hey, camera, whoop, yeah, come on. Um, rose quartz is for self-love and self-forgiveness and all of my t-shirts are made with love. Yeah, just so as you know. Um, so, I drop just a couple of those in the bottom and when I'm shaking them up, you'll hear them clacking around in there. And it does help to keep it dispersed at the bottom, especially with a good shake. Uh, it'll rattle through there and help that dye powder disperse a little bit better, break down a little bit better. But then again, like I said, if I get any freckling, I like it. I just think it adds to the art. So that is what the asterisks are for. Then, Back on the granny, there's a T there. And what does the T mean? The T means that the base of this color is turquoise. So the primary colors that Dharma Trading uses are turquoise, fuchsia red, and lemon yellow. Those are their primary colors for their dyes. Um, and so they put a T there to let you know that this was made with turquoise because turquoise has its own special considerations. So with, when it has a T um, next to it, so here's your considerations. It's gonna take more rinsing time to get the excess dye out of your piece before you start your washing process. Um, and it's true. And it will stain your hands. I, I have more fire red and turquoise on my hands at all times. <laughs> Because when I rinse, I don't always wear gloves. And it'll stain for a couple of days. So give yourself ample um, washing time um, to get the excess dot. That was rude. Get your excess dye out of your uh, the piece that you're working on. And then also, I'm going to read this from Dharma Trady's site. Because I don't know it verbatim. Because it's not in the style in which I die. So from Dharma's website for the tea, it also says warmer tap water up to 130 degrees Fahrenheit 
uh, when vat dyeing can give deeper shades. So if you're vat dyeing with turquoise, um, you're gonna need hotter water. Uh, and vat dyeing is not hot water irrigation. Uh, I have no idea what my water temperature is. Uh, and I have been asked, is there scalding? I haven't had any scalding problems. So I just turned on my little electric kettle uh, till it shuts off, which should be 212 degrees because that's boiling. Uh, and then I start pouring it on stuff. So in, in my experience, I haven't had any trouble with scalding. So just know if you're vat dying, which I know nothing about, make sure your water temperatures are higher for a brighter color if there's a T on the label. And then also from Dharma Trading, when using Glauber salt instead of plain salt when vat dyeing, it's going to improve your results. So when you vat dye, you use salt as opposed to soda ash. And there's different types of salt depending on what you're doing. And your tea is also your indicator to check your salt. So that's why there's a tea on there. So urea. Do you use urea? I do not. Um, one thing, so urea, you'll mix it with your water. Um, it keeps your fabrics wetter longer. It doesn't allow the fabric to dry out. So your dyes have a longer time to set on your on your piece um, without having to bag. Um, because your soda ash is gonna open up your fibers so that dye gets in there and then your urea is gonna keep your fabric from drying out so the dye, liquid dye has longer to work into the fiber that's already prepped for it, right? So if you're using, um, and, and I should say, um, if you're using the double or the quadruple powders, um, the urea helps break the powders down so they mix better with the liquid and you don't have the freckling. That's another part of the urea. I actually called Dharma and asked them about that. Um, Dharma is awesome and they just walked me through it on the phone. I can't speak well enough of this company. Hey, editor's note. Um, I was told by a professional dyer several years ago, and I've been repeating this without researching it to find out for myself, um, that urea was already mixed into the dye powder uh, the natural fiber procyon dye powder that Dharma Trading makes, which is why Dharma was superior, um, which is why um, you didn't have to bag your um, your designs, your patterns, um, because the urea was already in the powder. You can just leave it lay on a table. Um, that that's why the dye powders were toxic. Um, always wear a mask when you're shaking. I mean, just always do it anyway. Um, but then once the powders were mixed with water, with the urea in it, um, it was non-toxic once you washed it out. Um, and just a lot of things I was told by someone without double checking. And when I went to Dharma's website to find out more information about urea, uh, I couldn't find it on the website anywhere. And that's why I called them. And I was like, hey, this is what I was told. And they were amazing. And they was like, if you buy the dye kit, it comes with urea to mix in. If you just buy the type, the dye powder tubs, there's no urea in here and you would need to mix it in there. So this whole time, and I apologize, I have been saying that the urea is already mixed into the powder and that's why everything is so vibrant. And it's not. Um, so urea is not required. Um, and I don't bag everything. So these are my experiences. So if I'm going to be doing a quick turnaround, like a, an 18 to 24 hour turnaround, because it's summer, um, I don't bag things. Um, I just lay it out on the table and then walk away, come in the next day and rinse everything out and then move on to my next batch. If I know it's going to be several days because it's winter, then I will bag things um, or lay them on a table and then cover them with um, 
a reusable, like a shower curtain that I can rinse off, fold up, and put away. Because uh, you know me, reduce, reuse, recycle with everything. Um, and so I'll throw that shower curtain across it um, without them being bags just to slow down the evaporation process. Now why do I talk about summer and winter? These dyes work best at 70 degrees or higher if you want an 18 to 24 hour turnaround. If you are below 70 degrees, let them sit. Let them, don't rush them. Um, it's gonna make a huge difference in your, um, the vibrancy and the saturation of your color. So just keep that in mind. Um, do you use Synthrosol? No, I do not. Uh, I don't use, I use all free. The, what, the really cheap washing powder. It's the liquid washing soap that is no bleach and no fragrance. So it's always like they're free and clear. And I, I use all because it's almost always the cheapest. Um, so I don't do anything special. When I get a garment or fabric or whatever, I immediately bring it home and wash it. And nothing special. And then I do my process of soaking it in soda ash, dyeing it, rinsing it out really well, and then I wash it three times uh, in cold water. I don't use hot water. Uh, same on that electric bill, kids. Um, but I will do a short cycle with no detergent. Then I will do a long cycle with detergent. Then I dry them. And then I wash them one more time on a cold cycle, cold short cycle. So everything is cold. And I just alternate between short, long, short, and only detergent one time. Um, and it's, it's, it can be that easy. Now is it because I've got good water? Maybe I've got a well. Uh, and you guys know I keep my soda ash really hot, um, so I keep that that pH level bumped up really hot. So does that got part to do with it? Do I have just do I have the perfect combination of everything here, so I don't have to use urea, so I don't have to use um, you know synthrosol um, when I'm washing my clothing, so I don't have to use a special soap and hot water, maybe. Um, but then again, I did this exact same process uh, at my daughter's house in Illinois, and she's got city water, um, and her stuff is amazing. So, I don't know. I think a lot of it is going to be, it's your art, it's your journey, it's your process, and you find out what works for you, uh, and what makes your best art. So that's kind of a quick trip into, Procyon Dye 101, uh, Dharma, Dharma Trading 101, uh, and my experiences that I have had with this product uh, and with um, the product that I make and I sell. So, and I just wanted to share a little bit with you, maybe answer some of those questions um, for all my new tie dyers out there um, as they're starting their journey, just to give them a good foothold to keep moving forward and keep experimenting and keep making your art if you like these kind of videos please like and subscribe i'll make sure i put it in the playlist so it's easier for you to find channels a lot of good content you guys know the spiel and remember be peaceful be kind it's important try something new today who knows you might like it i'll talk to you soon what does it mean and so that's what we're going to cooks, please, please, <gasps> please. Um, and so today, this is what we are going to talk about. I'm gonna start this whole video over again because this is so awkward. <sighs> what about urea? Do you use, oh, yeah, I know what's doing my camera. It's this white, ah, we're not gonna hold that up. <laughs> Figured you out, camera. Okay, so...